Hi everybody, Ingrid here. Now, over the course of a month between March and April, I released seven part series called Grow With Me on my Instagram page. And it was all about how to start from scratch buying seeds to planting out your seedlings over the course of a month. And um, I've put together all of those series into this nice little package for you so that you guys can watch the whole lot um, and know from start to finish how to get started on growing your own vegetable bed. So I hope you enjoy it um, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Hi guys, Ingrid here. I'm back from Bunnings and I'm going to show you what I bought. Now I did buy more than what I'd usually buy. I do really like... Um, planting my seeds directly um, but I wanted to show you if you want to start growing from seed how to do this so we can do it together it will be fun um, and join in if you want to so I've bought um, a whole heap of different things here and I've laid them all out and I'm gonna try two different methods so you can pick which one you want to do um, but I've got if you did want to um, put them straight into these kind of cool little um, jiffy containers so these are the thing i really like about these is that um, they decompose in the soil so what i'm going to do with these ones is actually put the seeds directly in here with um, the osmocote um, seed raising um, mix and then i also have um, a bought a little um, my favorite um, which are these little um, jiffy um, peat pellets and you just put the seeds in there and then transplant into the soil as well um, my favorite product to use on my plants is sea salt. Um, now, if you do have a worm farm, please go ahead and use the worm wee on your um, vegetables. But I'm gonna show you how to use sea salt if you don't have a worm farm, um, which will also effective, be effective on helping your plants to grow. Um, I really think that every gardener needs to have a soil pH kit, um, especially if you're growing. Um, helps you to know what's going wrong in your garden. So sometimes things just don't grow, things aren't doing well, and knowing what um, is happening in the soil can be really helpful. Um, and the pH can help tell you that. Um, and some little plant labels. If you've got um, sticks at home, you could use sticks. There's so many different ways you could use um, plant labels, but I just got some of these to show you that you can pick up these from Bunnings and use these. Um, and then I um, am going to grow a variety of vegetables um, that will be ready in the next probably two to three months, okay? So the things that I'm gonna start growing um, this season um, I love peas. Now, I like to grow what I like to eat. You can grow whatever you like, what you find interesting. Um, some people really like to grow onions. I don't grow onions, I buy onions because they're cheap to buy and they actually take about six months to grow. So it's not something I grow. So you gotta make those sort of decisions. You can pick what I am growing or you can pick your own, um, but I'm gonna show you what I like to like to eat and to harvest and what's your fun, okay? So um, I love snow peas. Um, or well, when I was younger, I used to call them ski beans. Don't ask me why. I used to always queue up funny, silly names for things. But anyway, I'm growing some um, some snow peas. Best thing about growing beans and peas is that they actually fix the soil by adding nitrogen into the soil. Um, so they are fantastic to grow things next to other other plants. Love growing next to peas because they do provide. A nitrogen boost um, and the other thing I love is that they're space saving so I can grow them up on like a trellis which is really effective way to grow um, and then you've got your brassicas um, so I've got um, some broccoli um, that I'm gonna grow and then we've got um, oh and I thought I'd try this one I've actually never grown a um, remisco um, bro broccoli but I thought it would actually be quite fancy um, and try growing that from seed um, my good old pak choy, love that. Lettuce, you can grow that all year round. Green's a fantastic way to maximize space. And you know, you pay quite a lot for greens and they're super quick, easy to grow from home. Um, I love rainbow chard or your silver beet, rainbow silver beet. Um, I'm also gonna grow um, a purple um, cauliflower this year. And then I have the cabbages, um, which are fantastic autumn winter veggies to grow. Carrots, I'm a bit of a fail at growing carrots. Mine are always wonky and strange, but I'm gonna give them a go with you guys watching. Um, 
And then I like beetroots. They're very healthy for you. So growing them. Um, so in winter, in um, autumn, it's all about growing lots of your greens and lots of um, vegetables that don't mind the colder, um, wet weather. Um, so I'm going to start showing you how to plant these up a little bit later. Okay. In the next video. Hi everybody, Ingrid and Charlie here. So, um, so we're going to start doing our seeds, which is so much fun. It's a lot of fun. Isn't yeah. it? Okay, so it's a great thing that you can do with kids. Charlie absolutely loves doing the seeds with me, don't you? Yeah, Patchy and Claire's playing on the floor. So what we've got is our little Jiffy peat, um, peat pellets, um, which we're going to stick. Yeah, over here. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, honey. Now we're going to put them in the tray like we do. You're good at this, aren't you? Charlie really likes this job. So we put them all in the tray like this. And all that we've done is stuck our peat pellets in here and then we've poured some, what have we put in? Yeah, water. So we just need to put a little bit more because they just need a little bit more. Some of them haven't got quite enough water. And they soak up all the water and then expand. And then all you do, super simple, is I like to just put them in rows. So shall we put them in rows, Charlie? Do you want to help mummy? So you put them in rows just so that it's easier. Great job because I've written little labels of what they are, but I don't want to have to stick one in every single um, palette. So I'm just going to put them in the row and then I'll know exactly what is in each row. So there's 36 of them. So we're going to turn them all over. Oh, they've sucked up the water, haven't they? You want to pour? It's a really great activity to do with kids. They love it. I think growing from seed is especially good with children. Always pour off the excess. Good boy. Let them suck it up. Wow, they're all expanding, aren't they? Getting bigger, it's like magic, isn't it? They're sucking them up. You're very good at this. All right. So then, what we do is once they've sucked them up, then we just grab our seeds. And what do you want to start with? This one? Yeah. This is pak choy, okay? So we're gonna grab our little pak choy that I've written earlier, like so, and I'm gonna stick that in here, okay? I want it. Can you stick it in? Good boy. That's it, well done. And so that will be the pak choy. And then everything in that row is going to be pak choy, okay? So we'll do one, two, three, four, five. Now, with the seeds, I like to put two in each one, just in case that they don't germinate. And then that way we can actually um, take out the, the weaker seedling. Um, yes, of course you can, darling. Now we're gonna put two in each one. They're tiny, can you put two in each one? Good boy, in this one, put two in the middle. Good boy, one, two. One, two, push them down. And you just push them down in the middle. And you might need to just divide the, um, just open up the um, little peak palette just so you can access it. And the beauty about these is that once your little seedling's grown, you just transplant it to the soil. So Charlie and I are gonna finish up here and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So we've put all the seeds in now and we've put our labels in. Nice and easy, so we just pop the lid on now on top. Oh, that's Claire again. Um, and then we're ready to go, aren't we? You excited to see them grow? Yeah. Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Hi guys, tonight I'm gonna to be showing you how I thin out my seedlings. Now this is a really important task so that um, you actually get one really good healthy plant. If you don't do that, you actually can get competition and um, you can create leggy little seedlings. You don't get a very good plant, um, which means you don't get a very good crop. So um, what you need to do is 
Firstly, if you do your pea pellets, you could only put one seed per pea pellet um, and hope that that germinates, or you could put two and then you only need to thin out one. But when you work with kids, um, they find it very hard to put one or two and end up putting many. So what I need to do is actually um, thin these out so that there's only one seedling per pea pellet. Now the temptation might be to actually leave the longest one. Um, and that actually is not a good idea because usually that's the most leggy one. Um, so you think, oh, which one should I pick? The trick is just pick one of them. Um, and usually one that is not one of the tallest ones. Um, the other thing you need to make sure that you do is not cook and just wipe the scissors blades. What I do, this is some pak choy, and ideally, um, you want to do it when you just have two leaves. Um, this one really probably should have been thinned out a few more days earlier, um, but I'm just going to snip at the bottom like so, and I'm going to pick that one there. So once you've thinned out uh, the rest of the seedlings, then your job is to put them into a slightly bigger pot so they can grow into a strong seedling before you pop them in the ground. You could, if you wanted to, put them directly into um, the ground now, but I think why, when you've gone to all the effort of seed raising, put them in when they're so young and still vulnerable. Let's get them a bit tougher, a bit stronger, um, and then we'll have a much better chance of getting a nice crop. So you can go out and purchase um, little containers to pop um, the peats, um, the little peat pots into, but I'm very much about um, reuse, recycle. So um, what I've done is got a whole lot of um, pots and a tray from various plants that I've bought um, previously and hang on to the pots. And so I'll reuse these. But you can be creative. It doesn't really matter. There's no rules about what it has to go into. Um, it just has to be something that's going to hold them until they're a little bit bigger and stronger. Um, so as a lot of um, supermarkets like to do at the moment, they package everything ridiculously. So this was um, the packaging that my sweet potatoes came in, but then was surrounded by plastic. Um, so I throw the plastic and then I'm going to reuse this um, as a little tray to put in some of the peak pellets. Um, and then that will grow the seedlings in there. So don't be afraid when you see something, reuse it. Um, the other thing that you can use, which are really good and effective, um, is egg containers as seed raising the little seedlings. So there's lots of different ways that you can reuse things um, and prevent um, things going straight to the waste. So I'll start doing that and I'll show you when they're done. do is actually just fill up the soil around the seedling like so and I do usually do this outside but today was a busy day so my only free time was at night time and that's why I am potting on the kitchen table don't tell my husband like so so I'll water them and they'll stay in that for the next few weeks until they get big and healthy and then I'll put them into a garden bed. So I'm going to pot these up and I'll show you all when it's done. So what you're going to end up with in the end is a few trays of these and what we're going to do is grow these over the next two to three weeks, get them stronger, healthier and then we're going to plant them in the garden. Hi guys, Ingrid here. Just wanted to give a quick little tip on those people that are sowing their seeds and growing their little seedlings at home. If your um, seedlings um, have been going for a couple of weeks and they're getting a lot bigger like this, they're almost ready to go in. These are some spinach that I've been growing. They're almost ready to get planted in their veggie beds now. But 
If you've been keeping them in greenhouse or inside, we need to adjust and acclimatize them to outdoors before we plant them. Otherwise, they might die when we plant them because they get a bit too much shock when they're transferred. This process is called hardening off. So what we do, we need to toughen up and harden off those seedlings before we plant them. And what we do is take our little seedlings, put them outside during the day and then bring them back in um, at night time. Or if you have a greenhouse, you can actually just leave the flap up during the day and night to get them acclimatized to the environment and temperature before we plant them. Hi guys, Ingrid here, back at my favorite place, Bunnings, buying some wood to make the planter boxes. So I'm just in the wood section of um, Bunnings and I just wanted to show you, you've got different types. You've got the treated pine, and then you've got this um, Sienna sleepers. Um, now the benefit of getting the Sienna sleepers is that they actually have treated them with a non-arsenic um, chemical, which is safe to use in um, veggie beds. So when you're buying your sleepers, make sure you get sleepers that are ones that um, don't have arsenic in it, because obviously you don't want that going into your vegetables. The other option you can go if you want um, a more natural um, look, is the hardwood um, redwood timbers. They are gorgeous, um, a little bit more dearer. Um, they will last you longer, but um, because they're all natural and they've been cut from um, natural growing trees, they actually have bends and grooves which make them a little bit harder to put together. Um, for this reason, I'm gonna go the more economical version, which is your sleepers, your treated sleepers, um, which they come cut pre-sized and they're easier to put together. Um, back at home, just so you know, we bought 2.4 metre length pieces um, of wood and we're going to cut it in half and do 2.4 metre by 1.2 metre um, planter boxes. I'm not confident on power tools, so my husband's cutting the wood for me. Um, but if you didn't have someone to cut the wood for you, you could get Bunnings to cut it for you. Guys, so beds are in. I could not have done this without my husband and father-in-law's help. It's been um, a few days to get these in, um, but I'm really excited to start growing and seeing what I can um, produce from these beds. Ingrid here. So let's talk soil. I've had heaps of people message me asking what have I put in my beds? What do I put in my veggie beds? Now soil health is really important because that's going to be what's feeding the nutrients to our little veggies but it can get really overwhelming. The most ideal mix is a mixture of both soil and compost. Um, what ratio you use? Well that depends on who you're talking to. My ratio is that I add in, say I'm adding in about six or seven bags of um, potting mix that's dedicated vegetables. I would then add in three to four bags of mushroom compost. Um, you could then add in some chicken manure as well and that will give you a really nice growing medium for your vegetables. I'm going to show you what you could purchase to do this. All right, now it doesn't matter what brand you get, you pick up whatever you want. This is just something that I've picked up to show you guys. So um, you can get your dedicated bags of vegetable, tomato and herb mix. Um, and I would be adding in six to seven bags of that um, to about three to four bags of your mushroom compost. Now the mushroom compost is gonna break down. It's gonna provide nutrients and it's gonna create a little bit of aerated room for those roots of your vegetables to grow, which is really important. Next, I'm gonna put on top um, my favorite, which is your pea straw mulch. Now the pea straw mulch not only provides nutrients as it breaks down, but it also creates a layer across your soil, which is gonna keep your vegetables um, nice and warm on top and the moisture in underneath, which is really important. 
Hi guys, Ingrid here. Well, after a few days of rain, the sun is finally shining, but it's nice and cool. So it's still a good day to do some planting. Um, I'm gonna plant up my beautiful seedlings and I'm gonna put a few things in the ground today that I wanna plant directly, like my carrots, um, kurabi, parsnip. Um, I've got some peas, some broad beans. I'm so excited. I've got lots more growing space. Um, I'm gonna get them in today and I'm gonna show you what I do. seed tape before but I thought I'd try it this is for parsnip so we're gonna see this is gonna be an experiment and see what seed tape is like Well, there you go guys I hope you really enjoyed watching the grow with me series um, it was a fantastic month um, I had so much fun filming it and showing you guys what I do in my garden over a period of a month growing veggies from seed um, and if you want to see how those vegetables are going and want to see the harvest um, make sure to check me out on Instagram gardening with Ingrid take care guys